we, we um, you know, we all know that continued use of unabated coal right, is the, um, in a sense, uh, biggest driver of carbon emissions over the next 20, 30 years um, and creates huge lock-in effects and has very substantial local air quality and water scarcity implications as well. So, so that is the context within which we're operating. Um, the, the, the view of the Commission uh, was that the developed economies need to phase out un use, unabated um, uh, use of coal um, in, in the power sector um, and get on with it, right, full stop. Um, the view of the, um, the Commission was also that um, we want to see, and I, I um, have to confess I can't remember the exact timing, but, but you know, by the mid-2020s, um, you would want to see middle-income countries um, not building any new coal. Um, and, um, you know, to the extent that they are, you know, continuing to, if you will, use existing coal plants, you, you'd hope that they were, you know, looking to upgrade them. And there are huge, huge opportunities for upgrading and changing the way that those coal plants operate and reducing the CO2 emissions per kilowatt hour. And so we should take every advantage of all those opportunities, uh, but no new coal on an unabated basis. And, and then for the low-income countries, um, our view was that, the, that what the evidence seems to suggest is that if A and B have happened, if the advanced economies have phased out unabated coal, if the middle-income countries have a, a clear you know, kind of pathway to do that, um, that there is a little bit more room under those conditions for low-income countries to continue building some new coal. It has to be at the top end, right, of the efficiency spectrum. Um, and in, in our view, it should be in the context of, of a plan over time to get out of coal. So it shouldn't just be an open-ended option.